What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a really cool project for you. One of my favorite things to build. We're doing a set of custom forged fire screen doors. I've already got some material cut here. We're going to get it thrown in the forge. I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. The first thing I need to do is knock the mill scale off the material and then hammer the desired texture into the inch and a half by three eighths flat bar. Alright, so this is the material that's going to make up the main structure of the fire screen. We've got the texture in it now. I'm going to take this top piece here. This is for the arched top of the fireplace. We're going to take this over to my little bending jig. Go ahead and bend this. This is my homemade hydraulic bender. This is not my design. I copied somebody else. This was actually the first thing I built in the shop for a previous fire screen build. You can absolutely make this bend without one of these, but this makes it a lot easier and is also useful for other bending operations. The first thing we're going to do here is make a center mark on the material and some more reference marks so we can keep this bend somewhat consistent. We will match it perfectly to the drawing I have on the table. It may take a few times going back and forth, but we will get it there. If you have any questions about this jig, feel free to ask me down in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I'll try to leave links to the hydraulic ram and foot pedal in the description. Here I'm placing all the texture material on the drawing and tack welding each piece down so that they do not move during the next step, which is to heat each corner with the oxyacetylene torch and lap the bottom and top over the upright pieces. I'm using the wire wheel to bring out the blue color that I want. Quenching the material also brings out more of that deep blue color we are looking for. So at this point I've got all the laps done. I'm going to cut the doors loose from the table, cut off the excess. I didn't show up but I did weld all the ends where the laps are so the doors are not going to just fall apart when I cut the tacks loose. I tried several different methods for these corner laps but this is the best way I've found so far. Now I'm marking out where I'm going to be drilling holes for the faux rivets. I am marking out the corners first because they're pretty straightforward and I also need the corner points so I can make measurements for each side. I'm starting in the middle and there's going to be five rivets here so I'm just laying out those and getting them spaced evenly. Once I have them laid out on one door I can put the two doors together how I like them and draw a straight line across that way I know the rivets will be lined up perfectly. This is one inch by quarter inch flat bar. This is the material we will be using for the handles. Pretty simple design on the handles. I'm going to match the texturing that we have on the rest of the frame. 
put a slight taper and bevel on all the corners. Here I've got the two handles matched up pretty nicely and you can really see how the color comes out when you use the wire wheel and quench technique. This is 8th inch material that we will be using for the latch mechanism. This is the catch for the latch. Again, we are just adding some texturing, beveling the corners, and we will be folding it over a piece of 3 16 flat bar to give it a little wiggle room on the 8th inch material we will be using for the latch. What I'm making here is the latch itself. I'm putting a 1 8 inch offset on the side that will be going into the catch, which you'll see here in just a minute. One thing I really like about these Achayo and Doyle anvils is how easy it is to clamp material directly to the anvil. This is a really nice feature. Here I'm just going to add a little bit of a scroll so that it's easier to manipulate the latch. If you haven't figured out what these are yet, these are going to be the hinges. What I'm doing here is heating them up and using this piece of 3 8 to put an offset so that they will fit over the corners we lapped earlier.
I'm drilling these holes with a 1764 bit and then I'll be tapping them with a 5 16 18 tap to accommodate the bolts that will hold the hinges in place. If you're doing any significant amount of tapping, I definitely recommend buying a decent set of taps. Um, the cheaper ones break easier and they don't cut as well and can be a real pain to use. So unfortunately I can't show you exactly how I attach the screen to the frame but you guys are smart and I'm pretty sure you can figure it out. Pretty much the last step before I'm ready to paint is to put a little bit of color in all the bolts that will be visible on the front of the screen. I'll be using the same technique with the wire wheel and quench tank to really get those colors to pop. Here I'm applying an automotive grade clear coat that has proven to hold up very well on previous fire screens. This is the finished product, let me know what you guys think. And I'll leave some pictures of previous fire screens. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this.